What's shaking YouTube peeps? John B here with another video. If you're watching this right now, I'm deep in the jungle of the Amazon rainforest, hopefully avoiding killer bees, uh, jaguars, caiman, pink dolphins, and among many other crazy, creepy creatures. Um, this is my second time in the Amazon. I can't believe I'm going back. I love this place so much. Brian is also with me on this trip. Anyway, um, hopefully I'm still alive. Let's just start off by saying that too. But I have something very excited to share with you guys. This is the day, this is the night actually before we're about to leave. And I have got an unboxing for you. Oh, it has been just a sweet minute since I have done an unboxing. And I'm, uh, I'm happy to say that I picked up some lures for this Amazon trip. Most of these lures in here are bass lures, but the thing is, is peacock bass are very similar to largemouth and smallmouth. Uh, they're not in the bass family, in case you were confused. They're a cichlid, but uh, they have the same type of mouse and they're very aggressive like bass. So we're gonna get this thing open. I'm gonna share with you guys some of the lures that I got for this trip. Just gonna open this up really quickly. You know what, dude, can you, um, Brian, can you give me the, I have a knife in the dining room. Just go, cause this is, this is, I mean, I don't know why you gave me this. This is not even sharp, dude. It should be on, on the dining room table. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Oh, you got it. Hey, thank you so much. Yep, appreciate it. Okay. Oh, you know what? Shoot. I'm sorry. I almost forgot. One more thing. My protection, because I don't want to hurt myself. It's under the dining room table. Sorry, guys. Brian was supposed to come prepared for this, but he didn't. Thank you so much. Sorry I raised my voice at you. There we go. Okay. I know I get a little bit crazy with these unboxings, but I'm trying to advocate towards safety here. So please give this video a like for safety. Oh, sh we're just gonna go right down the seam. I think that was a little overkill. Oh, look at that. Dude, this thing is sharp. Oh, wow, there's a shirt in here, and I think I ripped the shirt. <laughs> oh, it's actually chill. Look at that. Wow, it must be made of a cuddler. All the lures you see right here are off of Sackle Warehouse, um, which is funny because you know, you'd think you'd have to order them off of Amazon Warehouse, but it's uh, actually just all bass lures today. So I got some stuff that I know will work. I got some stuff that I'm gonna experiment with. Just kind of go back and forth with some different lures. I'm gonna start off by showing you guys the stuff that I know work. And then I'm also going to show you guys some stuff that's a little bit more experimental. I'll let it rain. Sweet, so obviously we don't have the time to go out. <laughs> We obviously don't have time to go over all of this, but I'm gonna break down some of the essentials and some of the things that I think are unique and I can't wait to try. That The one thing I've learned very swiftly going to Amazon is peacock bass, are <laughs> they're pretty stupid. You go there and you expect to catch 100. Some days you'll have like maybe 15 bites, other days you'll have 200. Generally speaking, the presentations and the lures that you throw them are straightforward. For example, one of the lures that did really well last year was just a straight up hair jig. This is a lure that's literally got zero action. It's got barely any movement. This is straight bucktail. And uh, this, I think, caught my biggest peacock of the trip, which I, which I believe was like a little over 10 pounds. The company that I mostly purchased hair jigs from are Spro. Um, never tried these hair jigs before. And the Amazon, the, the local guides, they'll tie their own hair jigs. But I'm interested to try these up because these have stout hooks. Um, and they look pretty good. The size is a, is a half ounce. In case you were curious. The other thing that I wish I would have brought the last time I went was jerk baits. I didn't bring any freaking jerk baits with me. Uh, so I got a bunch of jerk baits this time. I got some Yozuris, I got some Jackal squad minnows, just a nice healthy balance of a little bit of everything. Here you go. Here we have got the uh, the squad minnow 95 SP. Suspending jerk baits are really ideal, but uh, if it floats, that's also not too bad. These little guys are also really dialed too. Another squad minnow. The cool thing is last time I did an unboxing, lure unboxing for you guys before I went to the Amazon, it was like not knowing anything about it. But now I'm returning to a place that I know a little bit more about. So I felt like I was more prepared making this order. And the one thing that I learned very swiftly is the colors that do well are the whites, the yellows, the greens, and the reds. Very simple, very straightforward. These peacocks are not very fancy fish. They just like straight up forward meals. Well, like this right here is a perfect color. It's a fire tiger color. Just imitate some of the uh, natural forage around there. A lot of the forage is like, you know, cichlids and crazy colored minnows. Like I didn't even know half of the fish species in the Amazon. They all look like rainbows. They all look like rainbow sherbet. Here's some other hair jigs. Uh, this is by Cumberland Pro Lures. That's a big, big hair jig. I also want to try like some straight up stuff too. I got like a, a Meps Aguila, which is a, a pretty, you know, notorious lure for catching fish. I thought maybe like some piranhas or I don't know, smaller peacocks would eat this, but it's a, it's a classic. There's that little Aguilar right there. Um, 
<laughs> Brian's trying the helmet on. Isn't that thing sick, bro? I also picked up a bunch of hooks. These peacock bass, among many other species that dwell on the Amazon, like to bend metal. You'd be surprised, using straight up 65 pound braid, the hooks just can't withstand the power of some of these fish. So I got some like 4X, some 3X, um, a few 2X hooks, stuff that I know these fish aren't gonna stray off. 4X is like made for freaking GTs. Like there's nothing in the Amazon, to my knowledge, that's going to stretch them. Unless I hook like one of those stingrays, which I believe are the biggest freshwater fish that swim around in those waters. We're gonna stay away from those guys though. <laughs> that's not what we're going for. Here's something kind of neat that I wanna show you guys. Where is it at? I saw it earlier and I lost it. Oh, here we go. Check this bad boy out. Look at that. This is like a big swim bait that I wanna throw on down there. One thing that we chased, <laughs> I don't even wanna talk about this. I don't even wanna say the name of the species, but you guys probably know what I'm about to say. One of the species that we chased after down in the Amazon was the, was the Arapaima or as they call them down there, the paracu. Very elusive fish, they get up to 200 pounds, they're such badass fish. But what I did is I did some research after chasing after those fish in the Amazon and I realized that a lot of the people that fish for them actually use big swim baits, big glide baits, just like bass. And if the opportunity arises, I might, uh, I might give this a quick little dangle, as Justin would say. So we got big swim baits, we got jerk baits, I got extra hooks. Also too, top water spooks are like Huge. I caught a lot of fish on topwater spooks. It seemed to be like the simpler the better. Like I got this straight up just like bone white rebel spook. I think this is like a three dollar spook. I don't know how much this thing is. It's, super, it's like super cheap though. But this is what they like. They like this stuff. They also like just the straight up head and super spooks. Um, I caught a few on this. But to be quite honest, I got most of my strikes in little ones. And if you throw the little ones, you catch a bunch of different species of fish. Now another lure that's kind of like a cross between a topwater spook and a jerk bait is a sub darter so we got a few of those in this package as well sabil is a good sub darter company this is a uh, stick shad i've used these for big striped bass in massachusetts and they work super good so i decided to get a few small ones and these guys uh they sometimes float they sometimes suspend or sink and they're really really versatile lures it's just like a an underwater twitch bait that uh, doesn't really dive it like doesn't have a lip on it so it's like a jerk bait without the bill okay so it's taking me about I don't know, like an hour and a half to finally get all this tackle in organized positions and get everything rigged up for this trip. We literally leave in like, oh God, less than 12 hours. So I'm just like racing against the clock. Anyway, let's go over some of the stuff that I will be bringing to the Amazon. Some of you guys may see this as packing too much. I personally see this as packing just the right amount or maybe just a little bit less than um, I, uh, I have in the past. So let's take a look. So packing light, I've got a fly box here full of Mostly streamers meant for peacock bass. Next to that, I've got the tools. This is for toothy fish. This is for cutting heavy line. This is for uh, split ring removal, and this is for heavy split ring removal. Um, we got the line here, 65, 50, and, or no, that's 50 and that's 30. So we got three spools of line, 500 yards on each one. For some reason, the 65 is like super huge compared to the other ones. Okay, now here are the baits that we unboxed just recently, plus a few other random hodgepodges. Again, not super organized, but it's my system, so don't hate me. Got some big swim baits here for some big fish missions. Hopefully that happens, I'm not 100% sure, but it's always good to be prepared. Um, I've got three big swim baits. One's a glide bait and these other two are swimmers. One's a, I think that's a slow sink and that is a floating. Then we got plenty of replacement hooks. That is super important for fishing in general, but especially for fishing for peacocks because they like to bend metal and they're just crazy. Also here are all my hair jigs, mostly chartreuse and white, but a few red and black ones as well. Also got the uh, the MEPS, can't leave home without the MEPS. Then uh, in split rings, it's nothing too exciting. But anyway, that's the first box. Underneath is the goodies. This is the hard bait den. On the right, we've got jerk baits, some suspending, some floating, some sinking. Mostly squad minnows and Yozuri jerk baits. I wanted to pick something that was like a hard resin, like I didn't want to use like a wood or a balsa because peacocks just destroy that stuff. So these are pretty durable. I've used these in the past. The Yozuri ones especially are super hardy. And we've got some like sickle colors here, some flashy ones, some matte painted ones. Just trying a bunch of different stuff. Um, I can't really remember what they were eating last year, but I believe it was mostly just minnow patterns. This right here is a stellar bait. We use this a ton in the Amazon, but unfortunately we only have like one with us. 
This right here is, oh my God, focus you wiener head. This bait right here is a sub walker. It's like a subsurface glide bait. It is super freaking deadly. We caught so many different types of fish um, in the Amazon with this thing. So I'm bringing extra of those. I think I've got three. I've got I've got the uh, clown yellow head. I've got like a natural emerald shiner and I got an all white. So three of those I'm packing. I got some other glide baits in here. These are mostly glide baits, subsurface glide baits. Then we got kind of smaller spooks over here. We got super spooks up top and then some uh, super spook juniors. So we got top water jerk baits, subsurface twitch baits, you know how it is. So three different classes of baits in one box. Okay, now last but not least, let's move on to the reels. Reels are all spooled up with different pound tests. Actually, no, these ones both have 50 uh, pound tests on them and this one has 30. That's gonna be my guinea pig. I'm gonna try to uh, maybe throw some lighter gear on this. But these reels have really strong drag, especially this one. This reel is actually called a monster drive. It's the Antares uh, DC monster drive meaning it is legitimately meant for fishing the Amazon like no joke So I'm really excited to use this one. It's a fast gear ratio. I think it's a 7.1 to 1 if not an 8.2 I think this one's an 8.2. I'm not sure all Japanese Shimano reels that really is kind of the pinnacle for reels uh, any sort of Shimano or Daiwa product that comes out of Japan is gonna be a big ticket So uh, I've just got three with me and yeah, I, I don't know which ones I'm gonna use for what but there they are So we got flies tools reels hard baits, big baits and hair jigs. And then there's Brian. Anyway, that's a, just kind of a taste for what is going to go down in the Amazon. Hope you guys are stoked for the series. I'm stoked. I just want to say that I hope you guys aren't expecting like the same content I filmed last year or anyone else has filmed on YouTube. This is going to be wildly different. It's not going to be like nine straight days of peacock bass fishing. I get it. I know you guys have seen peacock bass on YouTube. So I want to do my best to make this truly different. Also, We've got the weapon behind me too. Brian's an amazing videographer and editor. So this is gonna be a situation where I'm not gonna be fully editing this. I'm obviously gonna be overseeing and helping Brian, but it's gonna be a very different perspective. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. That is it. I'm gonna catch some rest, pass out, and dream of some big Amazonian fish. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys are out there enjoying this fall winter weather, catching big fish. I'm gonna peace out. As always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop. Thank you.